All right. So for all the people that say that all my videos are a bunch of negativity filled bash fest, tonight's show was good. In fact, it was really good. You had a lot of good matches tonight, and it's about fucking time. And look how it went from, like, ice cold last week, the UK. What a terrible fucking show. To this week, red hot. A lot of action. They start off with Ricardo defeating uh, Biggie Langston and Zeb Coulter in a triple threat match. The winner, um, this is all the managers. The winner gets to pick the stipulation, you know, the guys they manage get to pick. I was looking at this match and I was terrified at it. But then, actually, it was pretty fucking entertaining and the guys were way more entertaining than most uh, Raw matches from guys that are like regular wrestlers. Very entertaining. Everybody did their part. It was actually a funny little comedy match. Hilarious when you have Ricardo throwing the bucket at Big E's head. You know, like, uh, that. see that? It's some, some comedy I could get behind. It wasn't like retarded comedy. It was just, you know, Three Stooges style slapstick comedy. Comedy that ain't childish. It's just funny. It's simple funny. It's not like just totally retarded shit. I enjoyed it. A lot of people are, you know, probably going to say that they don't like it. That they think it's a, you know... They shouldn't have non-wrestlers on the show. And I could see that point. But I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed the match. I was laughing at it. So I have to I have to tell the truth here, brother. And uh, the truth is, it was actually a pretty decent little match here. Then up next, I wasn't a big fan of this. They had Make, the wi make a Wish. When I was at work today in the break room, I saw uh, John Cena. And everybody was enamored, actually, with the TV. Very impressed that John Cena, no one's really that big of a wrestling fan who was watching this. But they're moved by Cena. So now this is the continuation. Cena from the Today Show, wherever the fuck it was, what I was watching earlier today. Cena made a little kid's wish come true by meeting him, which is nice. But you know why WWE does this? It's so they can be accepted in the mainstream. They're good people. We're not bad people who beat each other up. <laughs> well, no. We're good people. They, you know, wrestlers just, you know, they. it would be okay if they did this once in a while. But all the time, you know, kind of loses its, you know, importance. They're doing it all the time. It looks more like sucking up than anything. And I know a lot of people will bash me. But that's people who don't want to see the truth of it. WWE never used to do things like this. Wrestlers would do it in their spare time. Mick Foley would do it in his spare time. But not all the time. And they wouldn't like, you know, make it like a whole publicity stunt. Bring everybody out and all that. They would mention it. Show a brief little package. You would go, that's a nice thing. But now they just whore it out. And it's a little bit disgusting. They bring out three kids all dressed in Cena merch. They got the purple shirt on. They've got the hat on. The wristbands on. I mean, hey, can you get any more fucking merchandise on these kids? You know, it. It. this is the thing. So it's almost like you have no choice but to cheer. They know this is a guy that's not very popular with the company. And they force you to cheer because he's out there with the kids. And you're not going to boo kids that are, you know, uh, you know, ill like that. That they're sick. That they're probably going to die. You know, so this is like, I don't like what they're doing here. You can try to, you know, fight me on this and say that it's like, you know, it's a good thing that they're doing. It's charitable. But I think that they're kind of whoring this shit out and I don't like it. I could have done without this segment and it was, you know, it was a little bit depressing. And, you know, but the thing is, you could say it was nice, but really... On a wrestling show, it's not really supposed to be nice. They can show this in a little package. They don't make, have to make it a whole publicity stunt. I don't like when they whore out people like this. It's That's not polite. That's not nice. Then you got Orton defeating Cody Rhodes in a pretty good match. A very intense match. Um, you know, some good, like, uh, some good brawling between the two. 
like a lot of energy. Cody Rhodes hasn't looked this good in like about a year. He had like a, a sense of urgency in him, a, like a sense of fire, like a fire was lit inside. Or it just could be that they actually fucking let him wrestle. They let him actually wrestle to his potential. Unlike, you know, the last couple of months, all he's been doing is jobbing out to big goofs like Brodus Clay and Tensai. They actually let the guy wrestle. He, you know, he actually did good. Big surprise there. You know, when you let guys and you lower the restrictions and you just let them do what they do best, there's no surprise that they're going to have a good match. So why can't we get this on a regular basis? But I was happy we at least got it tonight. A good match. Then it was uh, Naomi uh, defeating one of the Bella Twins. This girl, Naomi, has actually got some pretty good moves. She executed a couple of good moves showing that she knew how to wrestle. The Bellas, though, they suck. They do the twin magic switch, and uh, they get the pin. Then the referee is talking to the other girl, um, Cameron, and she tells her that they swapped out. The referee, uh, the announcers are like, oh, there's no instant replay in the WWE, even though there always is instant replay. And then they, they show the replay, you know, after the referee reverses his decision. So the thing is, what's hilarious about this, very funny, is that the referee, and you got to look at it from this perspective. I know it's fake and all that, but you still got to have some logic. Back in the day, you know, some stuff didn't make sense, but a lot of it did. They at least tried to make this fantasy world look realistic. <laughs> they don't even try that anymore. They're like, this is what we want to do, and we don't fucking care if it makes sense or not. The referee reversed the decision based on the the word of the wrestler. Oh, I believe you, because wrestlers never lie. They always tell the truth. So he reversed the decision without even asking to see the replay. They showed a replay after he reversed the decision. After. That makes no fucking sense. I mean, you know, this is okay if you're half retarded or you're just flat out stupid and you don't understand logic. But for the rest of us, this is pretty fucking retarded. You know, the this girl, Naomi, I see what they've been saying about her. She's got a, some good moves, but uh, this is not a good way to showcase it. Uh, very shitty and unnecessary. Why do they have to reverse the decision? What does that prove? It's just, you know, a waste of, of time. It, like, it overcomplicates things. That's what they do in WWE. They overcomplicate things. They make things weird. Storylines get weird. It's enough with this weird shit. Can we just get it to be simple again? And, you know, with not having to, like, be all this extra fucking stuff that doesn't make sense. <laughs> then you get the shield coming out. And then 3MB that makes their way to ring. I don't understand where they're going with this 3MB thing versus the shield. They start to brawl. But then Daniel Bryan and Kane come out to get revenge for what they did to The Undertaker. Um... You know, this is a good feud. Um, they had a great six-man tag on Raw. The whole thing with Undertaker over on SmackDown was great. I'm a fan of this, this thing. The Shield is really proving themselves. They're, you know, they make it something to watch. And especially Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose is obviously the leader of this group. The unofficial leader, perhaps. And, you know... The promos have been very good from him and a good performance against The Undertaker. A short, but a good performance on SmackDown. So I'm really enjoying this whole Shield thing. It took a while for me to get into it, but The Shield have finally proved himself. Because you see, that's how I am. I don't exactly jump on a bandwagon like everybody. You know, they see a wrestler that a lot of internet dorks are liking. Everybody just fucking jumps on the bandwagon. And usually most bandwagons end up crashing and falling off a ravine. But this time, this is actually, it seems like a bandwagon that I, uh, I'm considering and I'm just about to get on myself. But uh, this is just, uh, you know, the internet people got to take a chill pill and they got to realize that in order to become a fan of something first, it has to be good. They have to prove themselves. That's like any other thing, you know, even if you're a baseball fan, they get a rookie upstart. You're not just going to all of a sudden jump up on his fucking dick, you know. You're going to watch a couple of games. You're going to see if he's any good and then decide if you like him. 
Then you got Dolph Ziggler defeating Kofi Kingston in another good match. Another solid quality match, and I'm surprised. A little bit of a botch at the end, but it was a very chaotic match with, you know, interference and shit. Very, you know, classically done match here. The style is like more old school. It's more old school than I just... Guys wrestling without any fucking bullshit that's stupid. No one walking out. No one getting counted out. No dumb fucking disqualifications that don't make any sense. It's about fucking time. Uh, you know, I think that Kofi botched a little bit at the end, but it wasn't really noticeable. Um, you know, they kind of didn't really catch it that well on camera, so I'll give it slightly a pass. It was a pretty big botch i caught it but the match itself was pretty good and uh you know i'm not gonna let that ruin it pretty solid effort there still not a kofi fan never will be it's pretty lame motherfucker but ziggler and yeah kofi did his part so a good match the guys these two always have good matches good chemistry between the two i enjoyed it then you got Jack Swagger defeating Zack Ryder in a squash match, but it was an okay squash match. The only thing here that I didn't really like is Zack Ryder is rooting for Del Rio. You know, why can't Zack Ryder be his own person? Why the fuck does he have to support other wrestlers, force you to like other wrestlers? This is what they did. They used him as a tool to get people to love Cena. Uh, like, what was that? Uh, a year and a half ago, 2011, they had Zack Ryder come out, say nice things about um, John Cena because they knew the internet crowd loved them. You know, luckily Zack Ryder's name doesn't carry a lot of weight with the internet fans anymore. Some, but not that many as, you know, as it was like back in 2011. So, you know, basically Zack Ryder's career is fucking dead. It's always going to be dead. They got let him get a little aggressive in this match against Swagger, and it made for a, you know a better than normal squash match. But still, Zack Ryder's career is dead. I believe that they could reinvigorate him by turning him heel, having him turn his back on his lame ass fans. But you know, that's about it. Um, so yeah, eh, decent here, decent. Then you get some lame shit with Tug of War. It's Mark Henry against tons of funk. Then Sheamus comes out. Sheamus lets go of the rope. Very lame, very shitty, stupid fucking thing. I think they did this once before, post-Attitude Era, in the Ruthless Aggression Era, Tug of War, but it's, it's fucking stupid. It's, it's lame. I, I think they did it with the Divas, as a matter of fact. Ah, you know... Fucking, uh, this is not how I want, you know, Mark Henry's boring enough. Mark Henry in a worthless tug of war. What the fuck does tug of war have to do with wrestling? I mean, you know, it's a good show. I'm enjoying the wrestling. As you can clearly see, I'm saying good things about this show. But why does there have to be shit in between? Why do they have to go and fuck it up? They could have a near perfect show or an excellent show if they didn't have this fucking fucked up bullshit. Fucking tug of war with a fucking rope. What the hell is this shit? And not only that, I mean, it was kind of funny with the Domino's pizza. Oh, they took my pizza. Yeah, you know, this is like retarded. I kind of laughed at that, but because it was so fucking goofy and dumb, uh, you know, uh, I don't even see a pizza delivery, man. Just all of a sudden, the fans just suddenly had pizza you know i wish it was like that in real life you know you just uh someone orders pizza and pizza magically comes to you what the fuck is this shit you know i don't i, I don't understand how this happens you know you you have a tug of war match and then pizza just appears out of thin air this is some world we're living in in ww with magical pizza popping out of the air during tug of war matches between fat bastards it's fucking just a fucking freak show half the time you know, and I don't understand because the other part of night is not freak showish, but then you come to this portion of the show and it's like fucking Barnum and Bailey. I don't get it. Then you got uh, Del Rio defeating Antonio Cesaro in another good match. They are on a fucking roll tonight. Another good match with some hard shots from Cesaro. I don't know, maybe this is a good thing that they took the belt off of him. I don't know, he seemed like he was motivated once again. Some 
good counter chain wrestling here, move after move after move. I was really enjoying it. Very good quality. The wrestling quality has improved tenfold. Starting, it started on SmackDown. You had two solid matches on SmackDown. Tonight, you got even more fucking matches that are good. A good match here. Just, you know, no nonsense here. Nothing fucking dumb. No retarded shit. No dancing. Just, you know, no fucking long ass rest holds. No, just fake looking punches. Just a good, solid, physical match like it it was, you know, this is how it used to be back in the day. Not just Attitude Era, but post-Attitude Era and pre-Attitude Era. You know, just like a good wrestling match, you know. Even when WWE wasn't that great, it, it, you always still had like a couple of good matches, you know, uh, every couple of weeks. You didn't have to fucking wait half a year to see a good match. So uh, uh, definitely a pleasing night. I am pleased. I am amused. I know a lot of people say... That, you know, I'm never happy. I don't smile while I watch the product. Well, that's because I wait for nights like tonight, motherfuckers. And how stupid do you look bashing me for when I bash horrible shows? That's so you can differentiate. Because, you see, when you get a good show, and I'm going to say good things about it. Because, you see, I say bad things about bad shows and good things about good shows. <laughs> You're a fucking retard. Okay, if you don't understand that, you know, that's how the brain works. If you see something shitty, you're going to say shitty things about it. If you see something good, you're going to say awesome things about it. Okay, yeah, I just taught you something that you should have known when you were fucking three years old, you goddamn fucking lunatics. Then more retardation. You know, once again, I understand how you go from a good match like Del Rio and Cesaro to complete retardation up the ass. Dance off. It's fucking Fandango versus Kali. First, they interview Kali about his dancing. I don't know what the fuck he said. And if you say that you know what he said, I don't know. Then you've got to be living in retardville with this man. I don't know if this is supposed to be funny or not, but it's just retarded and a waste of time. What the fuck is this shit? This man can't even fucking speak properly. Sounds like a goddamn retard. And that is because he almost is somewhat retarded. The gigantism that he's got. I think that this is mean. They're making him into a sideshow. You know, you're not supposed to be doing bullying. But this guy has a disability. And they're parading him around like it's like he's some type of circus act. Get the fuck out of here. You know, this guy is obviously a retard. He killed somebody in the ring. You can go read about that on Google. I mentioned that in the past. He's a fucking murderer. You know, uh, the thing is, he might not be able to uh, have helped it because, you know, the guy's obviously got some problems. I think it's obvious, you know, there's no way that the WWE is scripted as it is that they would let this guy go out there and do this unless he has a mental problem or some shit. And I, you know, like I said, he's got this, 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 this disease and I don't know, you know. Anyway, uh, they say that Kali won. The crowd didn't seem like they gave two fucks. Actually, if anything, they seem like they were pulling more for Fandango. But somehow, Kali wins. You know, I'm not a I'm not a Fandango fan, as you all know. But he did obviously win this shit, even though no one gave a fuck. More people were giving a fuck about Fandango, but they gave the win to Kali to the big retard. And then you got uh, Fandango beating up on Kali. You know, I, I know this shit is fake and all that. But I always say the thing is, it's like wrestling, it's made to look real. You know, part of wrestling, the goal of wrestling is to make it look like a real fucking fight. And having a guy the size of Fandango, not an impressive specimen by wrestling standards. You know, just get Kali down with a Russian leg sweep and be able to drop the leg on him. Looked like he was laid out by a Mack truck. I mean, I understand, you know... <laughs> It's just, it's, I'm not believing it. it. You know, it doesn't look like Fandango could beat anybody up, as a matter of fact. So this just was fucking trash. <laughs> fucking retarded-ass bullshit. Um, throughout the night, you had Ryback. Uh, you did have that shit where people walked out. Ryback isn't going to team with Cena, so instead it's going to be Cena and Team Hell No versus The Shield. 
and this was your main event and finally not a main event like a Divas Battle Royal or some lame ass bullshit like that but a real fucking main event like the one they had on Smackdown good quality wrestling back and forth physical match wild and crazy shit Kane's tearing up the announce table is he gonna put him through it Cena's about to get the win and Finally, that motherfucker Cena gets pinned. A, a, you know, a nice spear by uh, by Rain, um, by uh, Reigns, and and you know, I, I gotta say, very very good match here. You know, not very very good, but good. <laughs> Just like all the matches tonight, for the most part, most of the matches were good. And you know, Ryback then comes out at the end. Um, you know, they're trying to remake his look a little bit. Make it give him a harder look like a like a Goldberg. He was actually a little bit like Goldberg. Goldberg with the leather jacket, you know. But I guess it made him look cooler. I mean, if he has to really, you know, uh, find a way to look cooler, I guess steal from Goldberg. He's already partway there as a Goldberg ripoff. Uh, almost all the way there. So, I mean, might as well give him the leather jacket while you're at it. Anyway, you know, I don't give a... The thing is, at the end of the night, you weren't thinking about Ryback. You were thinking about the Shield and how awesome they looked tonight. And, you know, you were thinking about all the other guys who put on great matches, not Ryback. It just, like... I, I actually enjoyed the fact that they didn't have a lot of Cena Ryback buildup. It was better that way. I don't know. I think that this is, uh... This was a pretty good fucking show. I enjoyed myself thoroughly throughout it. You had some really good shit on it. Some some high quality matches. Some of them even felt pay-per-view quality. Um, you know, uh, all of them showcased what the wrestlers could do. And this is the type of shit that I complain about week after week. Why can't we get better wrestling? You know, we don't have to get blood. We don't have to get chairs to the head. It would be nice. But, you know... I will settle. I won't complain. That's the thing. I will overlook shitty stuff like tug of war and the dance off if we get good wrestling. It's a three hour motherfucking show. We should at least be getting what we got tonight. At least four or five good matches. I mean, if you're going to make us sit through lame ass, boring fucking recaps and, you know, stupid whoring out publicity shit like make a wish, if you're going to give us that trash, I will still enjoy the show and overlook it if you give us some quality wrestling. And they did that tonight. Hopefully, I know this is not because I ain't fucking stupid. But I hope, I hope it goes against, you know, what my prediction. That they don't go back to their old ways after this week. I want to see them continue this trend of good quality wrestling. This is what the biggest wrestling company in the world should be about. The best wrestling in the world. They should have great matches every week. There's no excuse why they don't couldn't have a good match. Give me one good fucking excuse. I'm not saying they have to have a you know a five star quality match. You know they could save that for the pay per views. But even the pay per views suck nowadays. So you know we should at least get a good match somewhere. Buy rates are down anyway. You know. Uh, besides WrestleMania, no one even buys any other pay-per-views. They're losing money out the ass. So there's no excuse why we can't good, get good matches like this every week. This should be every fucking show. Like I said, if they need it, if they have some type of weird fetish where they have to have PG skits, okay, I will accept that. I will even fucking embrace it if I have to. But we have to get that... With some good quality wrestling. It has to coincide with each other. It has to, you know, compensate. You can't just give a shit the whole way through. It's not worth watching, obviously. You know, why? How could I even make an excuse for watching a whole show loaded full of shit? Now, this is a show that was worth watching. It was quality wrestling. And you had, you know, some decent comedy even. So, yeah. Good shit tonight. I hope it continues. End the review. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs>